Hi everyone and welcome to my place. I'm loving this great botanical journey, going behind the scenes to see how our flowers are grown and where they're grown and what's involved and then gathering the bits while I'm out and about and bringing them back to the studio here and sharing designs. I, and I must just say, you know, if I, if I appear a little bit excited, I do really love the spring, especially after a long winter. So anyway, the, I want to just share, I'll just put those down there. I've got a secret to share about those because they're very nice. Okay, so while we were at Mangrove Farm or Creek Farm, these are some of the things that I discovered. Pertisporum. I want to bring this beautiful foliage back into vogue. It is gorgeous. I call it a connecting, filling foliage. The colorways are delicious. You've got the, the creamy bits and you've got the greeny bits and they're light and they're beautiful and they go so well with design, with the flowers of the season. The other flower I want to introduce is these. I saw the filica growing or flannel flower as it's sometimes commonly referred. I absolutely love this and I love the colours and when I'm looking at what to put together I always look for nat to nature and see what nature's put to get done and then see if I can just sort of like like a visual jigsaw of colour putting them all together. So in here I've got this beautiful gum that I'm going to use and that connects in beautifully with the pittosporum and then putting that beside it, that's another texture in the same colourway family and this, this viburnum. Honestly, I love it. I think that nature is just the most, or the botanical world is just so clever. Here we are, we've just finished a long winter and then whoop, the temperatures are right and then things start to come to life. What I love about this is not only do you get the lovely green leaves here, you get these lovely little textural interesting bits of berries into there. You've got the bigger berries here at varying degrees of maturity and then Hello, nature just thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add a little flower and the colourway, everything all beautifully connects. And that's what I love about spring designing. The colours are clean and they're crisp and everything kind of goes together, except I would never put daffodils with any of these things. Daffodils are loud and they're proud and they should just be on their own. And they've got a set that comes out and it's not very nice to other flowers. It actually kills them. So I don't bother about that. The other thing I do when I'm looking into designs is uh, I'm creating designers. Okay, what colorways have I got here? Now what container? I see silver greys and I just so happen to have had this lying around at the back of the cupboard forever and ever and ever. I hope that my mother is not looking at me from heaven because she would be disgusted that this has not had a good clean for a number of years. The reason I don't want it to clean and, uh, and this tonal value is because I just, if I put shiny with that, that's just going to dominate what I want to focus on and that is the flowers. So anyway, I put the eucalyptus in first. The reason I've done that is because that's going to give me my base. First to go in are going to be the filica or flannel flower and I love this stuff. You know what, that from picked this will last for months and months and months or you can hang it upside down and you can dry it and it will just keep going right through to the fall for like forever. Is it well, not really fever because nothing really is forever, is it? So now all I'm doing is what we usually do. Oops, that's wrong. Don't forget that when you're doing anything, just slant cut those, put that into there like so. And I want to put a bit of that over to there, bit of that into there, loose casual and informal is the direction I am heading with the sprint with the designing. Also I just want you to know that I have put um, a little bit of janola or bleach into the water keeps your flowers lasting a bit longer, keeps the bacteria at bay. Now anything like this here, see that there, just whoop into there and take that off. Watching these growing at Mangrove Creek was just like oh my goodness, because you see them, don't you? And you think to yourself, oh, I wonder how they grow. Well, it was wonderful to see those growing. So just have a look at the Great Botanical Journey and when we went to the farm to just fill yourself up with it, get some more information. And I'm going to just leave that, but I don't need that. Now, the reason I want to bring the pittosporum in is just you watch what happens. Look what that does. It doesn't dominate 
but what it does do is it just adds another texture. It's there, but it's not there. Now, see when you get bits like this here, you've got that big long bit there, uh, and then you've got your, your stems coming off. I just like to cut that off because I don't want that. And any kind of foliage, get those little bits of foliage off. And I just want a little bit hanging over the side. I do think that spring is the best time of the year for designing. Actually, that's a lie because I like all the seasons. But anyway, stop. Now, the next to go in is going to be the Viburnum. And the picture is all, look at this, the picture is just starting to fill up. Just a couple of bits there, look at that. How good is that? And those lovely flowers, they just fill a space. And you'll see that the, canal, the colors are all sort of like marrying up together, which is beautiful or, or inf infusing into each other's presence. Now I've just, what I've done now is I've just put that one there in and see how that's sort of like a little bit too high when you, it comes to how high is too high and, and how should I get my, get my lengths right. Just as long as it's not, see that to me was just going off a bit too far. So having that like that is so much better. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love it. Now, to that I could add some hellebores or I could add some pyrus if I wanted to. But another flower that comes at this time of the year are these. Now, this is a waratah and I have always thought, why do waratahs that are so big come in the spring? I have no idea, but the botanical world knows more than I do. So I look at these and I think, now what will I do with them? These, these just are screaming to be added into this design. So when these come, they come really, really, hold on, get that rid of that. These come tight, tight, tight. And I have to thank my neighbor for allowing me gracing me with five of these. She had hundreds, but I just thought five would be fine. But anyway, they come really, really tight. They take oh, probably a week to 10 days, sometimes longer to open, but they're stages of growth. So that's the, that, so it was tighter, that was quite tight. So that's just starting to open up. This is, you'll see the little bits in there. See, they're just all starting to come out. So when these fully open, they'll just be like, the, oh, they look like a little bit like a Lucas Pernum Reflectum, which is an orangey flower and part of the, uh, part of the, actually they're part of the Protea family, but they're so gorgeous. So I just thought, now the next thing I need to share is that these would be beautiful in here. So you've got all of these different sizes and textures, and then you, textures and sizes, and then you get these lovely, lovely, lovely blooms. Now I'm just thinking to myself, do I need to cut it? Will that be the right height or not? Now also, it's got some little wee imperfections where a bug's had a bit of a feed on them. Now, Normally you would take those off, but you know what? At this time of the year, I love all of these little imperfections. And Constance Bry, who I have loved and adored since I was a wee baby florist, she used to say, it's the imperfections that add to the glory of the design. Oh, I love that. So I'm just going to bring this down and into here. Hopefully it is the right height. But getting back to what I was saying about your dimensions and your heights and your etc to get your right lengths and to make it look good. It's usually one and a half times the height of the width of the container, whichever is the greater. Now, if I put that in, is that going to be too long? Yes, it is. I want it to be incorporated into one picture. Now with these slant cut, like I have here, years ago, the what you used to do to condition things like this was, you used to beat them. Now. I don't think that that's very good. Do you want me to beat you if you don't behave or do you just want me to leave you? I think that beating has gone to the back of last century. We don't do that anymore and I don't think that we should do this. If you slant cut that and place it immediately into your water, I think that you will find that beating is unnecessary. And also, I sort of just figured that it just, the, all you're doing by doing that is you just break the fibers. We don't want to break the fibers. We want the flower to just be for always beautiful. Now, let me just bring that down and into there. So I'm just gonna do these 
with uh, some a little bit higher, some a little bit lower, and I also want to position these so that they can be, oh, look at that, it can be viewed all round. Is that going to be right? No, just going to take a little bit, and I'm going to put that down and into there. Now look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Just a few blooms placed as if picked, and gathered into a vase and brought inside. This design will last for ages. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed sharing it with you. And also thank you again to Mangrove Creek Farm for allowing us to go behind the scenes and to New Zealand Bloom, because guess what? They get them to a market near you. And I think that that's just fantastic that you and I can share the same flowers at the same time. See you again another day.